I think I was born with a sensitive eye. I was always interested in beauty, and my father, as a socialist and uh, perhaps also a Jewish intellectual, you know, is like really uh, appreciated, you know, the content of things and not the look of things, uh, which I think is typical not only for someone who grew up in Israel. I think someone who grew up anywhere. I have a very mixed bag, you know, it's very hard to kind of uh, pigeonhole me because uh, um, when I studied architecture, the only thing I wanted was just to build. I was not interested consciously of anything else. I thought as an Israeli, I want to go back to Israel because I study in London at the AA and I said, I just want to go back to Tel Aviv and build. And perhaps uh, it's because I, I did biology before, I did science, I have a degree and then uh, I... Uh, it was to do with pleasing my father, and I was actually quite good at it. And I really wanted to do art or architecture because I wanted all my life to deal with the beauty. I defined it from the very beginning that we are not going to talk beauty in general sense. We're going to uh, talk uh, about and, and highlight. I'm very interested in new aesthetics and then designing something fresh and new, but all about habitation. So it's judging, looking at beauty through the lens of habitation. So it's like two burning issues. One, some people will think it's not burning issue, which is, a, you know, beauty. I think burning issue to stare. And the other burning issue is how, how people live, what, how people should live, how, what, how, what good architects work with. It's about habitation. And habitation is a very kind of general world word and people can interpret it in different ways and that's what we see. We see different interpretation. I was really wanting to have a VR experience in the exhibition. First because we are in Tallinn, we are in Estonia. It's a very high, it's a country that's really interested in high tech. It's part of it. I think VR is part of it. It's high tech. So I was very interested in having it, but I was interested. I am not experienced really in VR, but uh, and the only experiences I had in the past was in school and I got dizzy and sick and I didn't like it at all. I thought, oh, maybe it's my age, maybe for you, you are young, you, you can handle it better. But no, it's uh, the headset improved and I realized that I love it. I enjoy the experience. I enjoy the experience. And I think everybody enjoyed the experience. I could start understanding why people are crazy on it and why, it's all, why the game industry is kind of hooked on that. If architects always did models, I can see almost all of them moving to VR because you can experience a project. So it's a different activity of VR, of the virtual reality, because you can do so many other things with it. But I think for architects, it's incredible because, you know, it's so slow and so costly to build a building, to build good architecture, but you can make them feel it. You can be in and you should feel it. It's incredible experience. What we see in the exhibition is actually installations, but each installation, which was part of my brief, each installation has to be a segment for, for a real project, a large project. So I'm not pleased just with having a pavilion. I, I think it's not architecture enough. It's not architecture enough to, have, to research structures. What is the architecture? So habitation, you suggest a project for living. I want to see the project. The installations will be just a segment of it. It will be just a part of it so people, we can see physically, we can touch it, we can feel it. And we can see physically the language presence of it. The, 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 the presence of it. There is no definition for beauty. Uh, if I thought it is no definition for beauty, just as with love, you know, there's, it's very hard to define love. What is love? What, you know, what, what is it that we feel? But we know it's real, and beauty, just as love, it's real. So I think the core of the problem of, of if I call it a problem, of the cultural bias is the core of the diet's relationship between objective and subjective. So subjective was highly elevated through the 20th century and, and to serve as, as an architect, we serve society so objectively and it's how important it is. And uh, you know, subjective, everybody knew how important it is doing things subjectively, but you know, as part of being creative, but it was not discussed, it was not important. Objectivity was elevated and elevated so much that, you know, we, it was overdoing it. So uh, it's much more complex than that. In our aesthetics, there was a few findings between 2011 and 2014 that were quite uh, astonishing and very revealing about the, uh, nothing to help us with define beauty, but uh, 
it was proved that or found that uh, four types of beauty, like visual beauty, moral beauty, musical beauty, and mathematical beauty, are being sensed and experienced. When when we experience each one of them, uh, we can trace it on a very specific area of the brain, a very specific area of the emotional brain. So, just for example, disgust or ugly, they are sharing a site on a different part of the brain. And beauty share, all this type of beauty share a site with romantic love. The mathematicians, especially like mathematicians, for mathematics for physics, like Einstein, for example, like the theory of relativity, uh, they never stop believing in beauty. They discuss beauty all the time. It's a common thing. It's like, it's, it's, and what we confirm today by the mathematician, by the mathematician I invited here. So, you know, I start being interested. And they actually characterize very comfortably, you know, what are the characteristics? Okay, we cannot define beauty, but we have certain characteristics that keep repeating. So it's surprise, it's uh, clarity. It's when we work on something and then all of a sudden, there's an order discovered, like things fall into place. Uh, there's a kind of ambiguity, there's a magic to it. It's a lot, you know, so they very comfortably, very confidently discuss and characterize the experience of beauty. You, you meet really leading architects, they can do it very well because it's something built in us neuro neurobiologically. If someone has a talent for design, being a good architect and a good designer, you know, he's making the beautiful thing, he doesn't need to discuss them, he doesn't need to define them, he doesn't need... But for education and all that, it's, and, and it might change the conversation again because no one aspires to beauty. But if more people will be aware of it, and will be aspire again to beauty as it happened for thousands of years, then maybe architecture will change. Maybe we'll have better looking streets. Maybe we, we will understand that you have to, you know, that architecture, the core of architecture is aesthetics. Because aesthetics, aesthetics the look of it is actually holding all the different contents together. It's holding everything. It's holding all the practical stuff and the, and the, and the magic stuff. It's holding it together. We all fly today to take an airplane to here and there. 